Ladies and gentlemen, welcome into my college football official week number three upset alert. There's not too many good games this week, but we're going to go through a few of them. And then I've got some interesting analytical stuff to look at. I've got a parlay I'm going to find here that I want to talk about. But guys, we begin with the Buckeyes, Ohio State hosting Western Kentucky. I believe this line is now minus 29. And I have to say, it really does surprise me that people are treating this game as like a laugher for Ohio State. There's no way, you know, this is a tune-up game. I feel completely different. I don't think Ohio State has proven a single thing. People keep talking about their secondary being better this year. They have not faced anyone. Youngstown State and Indiana, their game plans were to run the clock out. They didn't even try and throw it. So in the game like this, you've got Western Kentucky. They've got a really good veteran quarterback, Austin Reed. They've got a superstar number one receiver as well. I think this game is going to be close. I do think this is going to be a breakout game for Kyle McCord. He's going to be thrust into action. You could see Western Kentucky up 21-7 to in the first quarter of this game, shell-shocking Ohio State. And the Buckeyes come back, Kyle McCord possibly throwing for 400 or maybe even 500 yards because Western Kentucky, they do have a really bad defense. I love the over. Think about this. Ohio State, 0-2 for the over. They're a team that normally always hits the, their overs. This year, it's been mainly because two teams are trying to ball control. They're trying to run the ball. That's not going to be Western Kentucky. This will be a good game. Ohio State does not generate enough pass rush. They do have a weak offensive line. I don't think that's really going to be a problem because Western Kentucky, it's not like they're this great team on defense. But either way, this should be a relatively close game. When you talk about upset alert, this game reminds me, it's very similar of Ohio State-Tulsa from two years ago. Technically, Ohio State really not on upset alert in that game, but it was very ugly. And Trevion Henderson had to have like, like 270 rushing yards to win it. So it's going to be closer than expected. People are going to be like, what's going on? Uh, but the Buckeyes will win. And honestly, we might see an outrageous score where it's like 50 to 35 or like 57 to 35. It's going to be very high scoring for both teams. I just get the vibe because it's like a later afternoon game. It's going to be a very long football game on FS1. The next game, it is noon. Uh, Missouri at home against Kansas State. Missouri really struggling this year so far. That's mainly why Kansas State is sitting minus five. There were a lot of people that were higher on Missouri at the start of the season than they are now due to Missouri's two performances, but I am going Mizzou to finally wake up and get an upset win against a Kansas State team that's very beatable. Missouri does have program momentum right now. They're doing better in recruiting. They've got, I would say, very comparable ta talent to Kansas State. And in the SEC, you need a big win like this in the non-conference, Kansas State. I've never loved them this year. You know, sometimes there are teams like that where I think they're overrated. And obviously, you know, Kansas State did beat Troy last week. I'm going to need to see it again. So that's why I'm going with Missouri to pull off the upset. Kansas State, they're on upset alert this week. Next, we have South Carolina traveling to Georgia. So this season is very interesting. It doesn't seem like there's a single team that's above everyone else. I guess the argument could be made that Georgia is. But guys, I've got Georgia fans even coming up to me and admitting and saying, listen, we admit we're not very good. Ohio State, Michigan, they're better than us. We just want to go 7-5, and 8-4 and four and make a bowl game. Even Georgia fans are starting to come out and say it. That Georgia Ball State game was very revealing. Ball State had Georgia on upset alert late in that first quarter. And then Georgia gets the sham punt return for a touchdown. This Georgia team, everyone's anointing them. It's all based off of last year and the year before. Just ask yourself, what has Georgia football done this year to deserve being a 27-point favorite over an admittedly, I'll admit, South Carolina has not been that good this year. They lost to North Carolina. They end up winning in week two after struggling early against, I think, an FCS team. But still, 27 points against Carson. You know, Carson Beck's not covering 27 points. Are we kidding? Carson Beck's five minutes are up. Georgia barely wins this game, but South Carolina, they're going to keep this close. It's an SEC game. This year is crazy. There's really no super team 
and, and Georgia will struggle. People will be very surprised. This is on CBS. They're going to start slow. People are going to be shocked at home. What's going on? They're supposed to be the number one team, and they're going to win this game by three, and then FSU will vault into the number one spot, and they'll push Georgia down to number two because they will struggle against South Carolina. But I do think Georgia will win this game, and maybe it's even a thing where South Carolina scores a late touchdown to make it look closer, but still, I think they'll cover the 27. Next, we've got Georgia Tech and Ole Miss. So this is a great scenario. We've got all the Sharps. Everyone is in on Georgia Tech having a resurgence this year. They've been a lot better. They're sitting plus the 20 against an Ole Miss team who, where, where the analytical models are super wonky. The analytics don't understand. They don't have nuance to realize Michael Pratt, the superstar Heisman level quarterback, was out for Tulane last week. Otherwise, Tulane probably would have won that game against Ole Miss at home. I've got Ole Miss winning it, but 20 points is just disrespectful to a Georgia Tech team who really has shown improvement. And this is an Ole Miss team who is vastly overrated by analytical models due to Michael Pratt's injury. I will take Ole Miss possibly being on upset alert. And then the final one here, it is Tennessee at Florida. So this is a pretty rough one. I just don't know what to make of Tennessee right now. Like, Joe Milton, he really wasn't good at Michigan. He was kind of just, you know, the backup at Tennessee. I, I don't know what to make of Joe Milton. It's very tough. But seven points against Florida, you know, in the swamp. It's a hostile environment. It's their first big home game at night. It feels like great value. By the way, this line is down to six and a half. Last time I checked, either way, I still like a major upset here with Florida winning this game. It seems almost too easy and this is going to definitely call for Nico Lamanleva, the true freshman superstar, to start for Tennessee over Joe Milton probably next week, honestly. But I will take Florida. Not I'm, I'm not too confident about it because Florida looked really bad week one. But you got to kind of flush that game. It was traveling West Coast. It was very, uh, you know, a tough game with a tough environment. They're going to be at home. They're going to be the aggressor. They're going to get up early on Tennessee, maybe cause a turnover. And Tennessee, they do have a gimmick offense. They run every play in like three seconds. So I will take Florida in that one. And then guys, so we've got some analytical stuff I found. Take a look at this. My goodness, you can't even see this, but this is all of the analytical rankings. This is a total composite into one. It is remarkable that they even have something like this, and they do have Ohio State still at number two, even after their two lackluster performances. Uh, you've got te Texas at number four, Penn State at number five, Bama's down to six. They have FSU at number seven in the composite. FSU is below Alabama. That is absolutely crazy. You've got USC, Notre Dame, Washington, Tennessee, and then Oregon a little bit low as well. But I thought that was just cool. And then you can see this is just based off the overall resume. So you want to be in the bottom left corner here. And you can see Texas by far that win in Tuscaloosa. They've got the best resume. You also have FSU there. You've got Colorado, North Carolina, and Utah. And then, yes, the worst team in college football right now is the Nevada Wolfpack. You also have Arkansas State and UMass, as well as New Mexico State up there. And then we do have a few more analytics to look at. So this is something I like tech checking out to see how these changes over the week. Group of five conference championship game projections right now. You can see the American sticking with SMU versus Memphis. So Tulane gets bumped off. You've got Western Kentucky. Yeah, Western Kentucky is probably going to end up winning that conference against Liberty. Liberty's not that good this year, apparently. Ohio and Toledo. Toledo is really good again. You've got Boise State and Fresno State. And then Troy taking on Coastal Carolina there. And then this is the relative margin. So this is just, I like this type of ranking. Average scoring margin per game relative to what would be expected of the average top 25 team given the schedule and see the analytics again. They don't understand that Ole Miss really should not be that high. They don't understand injuries. So Ole Miss is really, they're artificially buffed up because of that. Uh, but you do have o Oklahoma's always going to grade out really well in these analytics early in the season because they won a game 73 to nothing against an FBS team. 
that's kind of why that is. How about Oregon State at number four? They've been impressive, certainly. Cincinnati at number 14, that makes sense. And then you can see Alabama, Georgia, Ohio State. How about Toledo in front of Ohio State? But kind of a cool ranking system. Washington State getting a shout out there. UCF, certainly they're a team that I like. And then you've got this record achievement percent chance that the average top 25 team would achieve a team record or better given their schedule. So you can see Texas, just a 14% chance. That makes sense. Winning a game in Tuscaloosa is very hard. This just goes to show you how easy the schedules are for some of these teams looking more towards the bottom. You see a team like USC. They've had a very easy start. They're already 3-0. and They've got an easy schedule. Penn State's had a very easy schedule. Uh, really, a lot of these teams have, but Miami, very impressive start. Utah, starting off well. Colorado, Duke, and FSU, no surprises in terms of that. And then the season movers, who's moved up the most, who's trended down the most, Colorado up 43 spots and 10 total points, FSU, Syracuse, yeah, that's funny. So Syracuse has beaten two really bad teams and they've thrashed them and they've had really good game control. That's why they're up Cincinnati, very under the radar team. They've performed really well this season. Miami, underrated team right now because of their bad last year. Ole Miss kind of artificially inflated. Texas State because they beat Baylor on the road. Oklahoma, Toledo, and then Utah State like thrashed someone last week. So they moved up significantly. And then Arkansas State, yeah, I mean, if you lose 73 to nothing, North Texas has been a really disappointing team this year. I agree. Nevada is horrible. Baylor, they start 0 2. Arizona State, Boston College for losing week one to Northern Illinois. That makes sense. And then we are going to take a look at a few parlays right here that I do like. For college football, you've got Vanderbilt. So I think it's good value. Vanderbilt minus 200. They're not a horrible team. UNLV, terrible home field advantage at Allegiant Stadium. I'll take Vandy on the money line. I'll take Nebraska on the money line. There's no way they fall to 0-3 at home against a bad Northern Illinois team. North Texas, I think they rebound. They win this game outright. They're due for a win. I've been saying it. They're four-point underdogs on the road. I think they win that one. The Ohio State, Western Kentucky over seems like a virtual lock this week, over 64. Uh, We'll take Air Force on the money line versus Utah State, although Utah State did have a very good offensive performance last week. Air Force is significantly better. And then you do have Penn State, obviously, on the money line at the Illini. They are significant favorites in that one. And then here's another one, a little bit worse odds in terms of this one. You can see Oregon sitting minus 38 and a half. They tend to run up the score, and I think they're going to score into the 60s. So if they do that, there's no way Hawaii covers a 38 and a half point spread. Uh, Houston plus seven and a half at home against TCU. So there's good value on Houston, even though Houston has started the season really bad. TCU. I'm not buying them. You know, they lose to Colorado. They come back and beat Nichols. I'll I'll take Houston with the value plus the seven and a half. Cincinnati on the money line minus 700. That seems fairly obvious. Uh, And then Purdue at home. I love Purdue to win that game outright against Syracuse. It's gone to a virtual pick 'em. Purdue originally was two and a half point underdogs, but certainly that game on NBC. I like Purdue to win it. And then a random one here. We'll go with the under 53 on Central Michigan at Notre Dame. So Notre Dame's just going to want to get out of here in one piece. They've got Ohio State at home next week. They're probably going to be resting Sam Hartman the entire second half. I'm guessing they're going to be up like 31 to nothing at halftime. Central Michigan is just horrific. I'm not even sure Central Michigan's going to score in this game. If they do, it's going to be really late. But you could be looking at like, you know, 42 to 7, the under 53 hits. You know, 38 to 3, the under easily hits. It just seems like it's going to be a game that gets run out really quickly. Also, this is a 2.30 game, not a 3.30 game, and I will take the under in that one. But guys, that is going to do it for my college football week number three upset special. Make sure you're following me on X. Link to that's always in the description.